Hello, what is up guys, what's up? Today we are gonna talk about stopping the panic. And if you're catching replay, go ahead and scrub to the three minute mark and we will dive in. I am going to give you guys what I have learned on my entire journey about panic. Um, and we're gonna talk about living in the now. And then at the end, I'm gonna tell you two things that I've taken to help with panic over my years here on earth. What's up guys, how's it going? Hello. I'm really excited about this because I love this topic so much. This is something that I'm extremely passionate about as of recently. It's kind of something that I've really just discovered not too long ago. But it is profound to say the least. What's up? Hey, Aisha. What's up, Stephanie? Hey, hey, Vanessa. How's it going, guys? So good to see you on. I hope you're all having a good day. I'm just going to hang out for a minute, and then we'll dive in. But this is going to be a good one. Um, everybody needs to hear this. And I think that this is something that isn't going to be able to be ignored much longer by the general population. It's kind of like you have to discover this for yourself because you can't really explain it to someone like it when Tim and I had our little enlightenment moment we realized this and we realized that we couldn't tell people how to do this that it's something that you have to discover for and within yourself and it's just absolutely mind-blowing the way that it can change your life so hopefully I can say something today that can help you learn this inside of your own body and understand what it means because I think that's where everybody gets confused we just don't understand when someone's trying to explain this to us. Hey, Doug, how's it going? What's up, Lauren? Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Monica. Hey, guys. Good to see you on. I'm just going to wait one more minute, and then we're going to do this thing. Drinking my Hempworks coffee, as usual. How's it going, guys? Okay, so let's just do this. So I want to start this with maybe like a made up story. Hey Emily, how's it going? About a mom, let's just say it's her mom and her son, right? Because that can easily relate to me. So let's start this with a story and we can kind of unbundle this story as we go through the live and maybe it will make it a little more understandable for you guys. So let's say that we've got a mom and this mom is going to a party and she has her son with her, but first she has to go to the store. And then after the party, she has a meeting. Okay, so her whole day is store, party, meeting, bed. And that's what she is setting out to do today with her child. So first things first, they go to the store. And her son, he's a little boy. He's having the time of his life. He's picking up different things and talking and, you know, doing what little kids do. And the mom is just frantic because the mom is thinking about the party. So the mom's like, put that down, don't touch that, get in the cart, what are you doing, why do you have to ruin everything, I'm so frustrated with you, we've got to get to this party, we're running late. And so mom is losing her mind, and, and her son is just trying to enjoy the moment that he is in, because kids are really good at this, right? Hey guys, hey Tara, hey Deanna, what's up, Bear, how's it going? So finally they get out of the store, she gets him in the car seat, she's frustrated, they get to the party. So they get to the party, she sets out the stuff that she had to bring, and son's off playing, having a great time. People are talking to mom, but mom's not hearing what they're saying because mom's thinking about her meeting. Oh my gosh, I hope I'm well prepared. I, I keep thinking about my notes. Like she's not there. She's not there with these people. She's not enjoying her life because all she can think about is the meeting. So she gets her kids, scoops them up, they go home, she gets to the meeting, she has the meeting. And during the meeting, all she can think about is, I cannot wait to get to bed. I'm so freaking tired. I still have to put my kid down. I got to get off this meeting and I got to get my kid to bed. She gets off the meeting, gets the kid in bed, gets in her bed to finally get to this moment that she has wanted all day. And what does she do? She worries about how she treated her son. She worries about the fact that she didn't enjoy the party or the people there. She worries about the way that she put her life to the side to worry all day. And here she is laying in bed worrying about that. So what is this cycle that we get trapped in? Because this is everyday stuff for women and, and men all around the world, but especially for moms. 
And I see it all the time on their statuses. The problem is that you are not living in the now. And this is something that I've just started to do, you know, within the, the last six months or so, and it's absolutely changed my life. So I want to tell you guys about it. I want to preach about this stuff. So when we die, what do you hear? People are saying things like, I wish I just lived longer. I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. But that's not actually what they're wishing for. What they wish is that they would have cared about better things. They wish they would have cared about the important things in life. But instead, what do they care about? They're attacking themselves. They're worrying about the future. They're dwelling on the past. They're bickering with their spouse. This is the problem. It's not that they want more time. It's that they wish they would have cared about what was happening in the moment instead of worrying about the past and the future. So that's what we're talking about today. And the reality is, guys, your life is right now. It is not the next moment or the last moment. It is right now. And to most people, the present doesn't even exist because they are so worried about the next moment in their day or the moment after that, or the moment that happened two weeks ago. They're, they're never in the real life. The only thing that is real is right now, okay? So they never get to experience that real life because they're in the past or they're in the future. And they just never managed to get that sense of fulfillment. That's what I wasn't getting. When I was living in the future, I was never fulfilled. It was never enough. I just wanted to get to that next moment. So what I was doing is I was making my present moment an obstacle. It was a problem to solve. I have to solve this problem so I can get to this moment. And then as soon as you get to that moment, all of a sudden it's a problem to solve. I got to solve this problem so I can get to the next moment. Well, now that moment's a problem to solve. So what we have to do is stop making our present moment a problem to solve because it's not. It's beautiful. And I'm going to give you guys actual steps at the end of this to help you start to trans this transition to living in the moment. So we've got to stop trying to get to that future point, that point of fulfillment, that point where everything's going to be perfect because, guys, that point doesn't exist. It never seems to arrive. It just continues. The problem continues on. So the fact of the matter is that the past and the future are illusions. They do not exist. They are not real. And I can prove that to you. The future is a thought form in your mind that you have made up and if you're living in that thought form, what's going to happen? It's going to produce anxious feelings. So you cannot get stuck in your thought form. You have to actually live in your life in the now, not in your thoughts of the future. And even when you remember the past, you're still thinking about it right now. And when you think about the future, you're thinking about it right now. That is why now is the only moment that exists, period. So you have to be true to your life in this moment because the present is not a struggle to overcome. There's no point that you should struggle to arrive at because when you get to that point, you're just going to make it the same thing that you did in the last moment. You're going to turn it into an obstacle. So stop trying to solve the problem. There is no problem. You've just made that up in your mind. And whatever problem you think that you're working on, you can literally just take it and set it down. You can surrender your problem to the now. And when you surrender that problem to the now, you can start to actually see your life. You know, when you pick up that strawberry, feel how it feels in your hand. When you're sitting with your son, instead of worrying about your meeting in two hours, sit with your son and think about it. What does his leg feel on your leg? What is actually coming out of his mouth? Are you experiencing that moment with him or are you living in the future? Because guys, that was me. So I was living in the future. I was saying things like, well, when we get that job, it's going to be okay. We're going to make that $10,000 and things are going to be fine. One of these days when I can start working from home, everything's going to be okay. But that just produces panic. You're panicked because you're living in the future and it doesn't even exist. So you're just too wrapped up in your mind and you've got to get out of your mind and into your body. So let's see. Living this way is going to make your life so much tremendously better because your life is a cycle. 
okay? It's a cycle of ups and downs. And you're never gonna get to an up and just live there forever. It doesn't exist. When you get to an up, you can anticipate a down. But what living in the now is going to do for you is it's going to allow you to enjoy your downs like you enjoy the ups, okay? To me, enlightenment is when the downs are just as sweet as the uptimes, and the uptimes are just as sweet as the downtimes. No time is better than the other. No moment in life is better than the other. If you can enjoy that moment, whether or not you consider it good or bad, you know, don't put that label on it. Just enjoy it because it's the only moment that you have, right? So it's going to allow you to enjoy your life so much more fully if you can understand and master this. And I hope that I'm, I'm saying things in a way that you guys are comprehending this. And I want to talk to you about the flow. So once you let go and once you stop living in the future and living in the past, you enter into this flow. And Oprah Winfrey actually does an amazing job of explaining this flow. And so I'm going to read to you just a little bit of what she said about it. So she says, the quality of your destination depends on the step that you are living now. Okay, so the quality of the mom's party would have depended on the steps she was living in the now. So maybe she's at the store. If she would have lived that step in the best way possible, the party would have been much more enjoyable. And then she would have lived the party in the best way possible, and then her meeting would have been much more enjoyable. So don't ignore the present moment by thinking about the past and the future. Okay, back to Oprah. Whatever you are doing at any given moment, if you do it your best, it leads to the next best moment. You don't have to worry about the next moment coming if only you do your best in this moment. The destination is an illusion. The future is an illusion. So you can put that destination away and just enjoy right now. And here are some tips, some everyday tips that you can do to start living in the now and to start really experiencing fulfillment in your life. Okay. Number one, put that phone away. Every single alert notification message that we get, it pulls us out of the present moment and it throws us into the past or it throws us into the future. And you have the ability to ignore all that shit. Okay, I do it every single day. I've got people waiting on me and asking me things and wanting things from me all day long. But guess who's in control of when I get back to them? I am. Guess who's in control of even reading that stuff? I am. And guess what I do? I don't. I don't read it until I want to. I don't look at it until I want to. When our kids get home, we are completely tech free. So our business goes away at 5 p.m. and it doesn't exist until after they are in bed. Notifications and Facebook and Instagram and my mom and everybody in my life, they do not exist while our kids are around. And they do not exist if I don't feel like letting them exist in my life. So I literally get lost in that flow and I put away the thing that brings me to my past and my future, my phone. So put your phone away sometimes. Don't let it dictate your present moment. You dictate your present moment. If you want the phone, get it out. If you want to live in the present and you want to start finding fulfillment, then start putting it away little by little. Put it away a little bit more because I'll tell you what, you will get lost and it will feel so good. So put the phone away. Um, the next thing is small doses of past and future. Small doses of past and future are fine. And the way that I tell myself it's okay, aw, oh, thank you, Erica. You're so good to me. Thanks, girl. That means a lot. Um, so the way that I make it okay to think about the past and the future is I call it contemplation. So when I'm contemplating, I'm contemplating for lessons. I'm not contemplating to worry or to beat myself up or you know to, to bring on anxious feelings. I'm contemplating to learn something. So think about the past in small doses and make sure you're thinking about the past for a reason. If you're thinking about the past, do it to learn. What lesson do you need to learn from that moment? And then when you learn the lesson, put the past away. It doesn't exist. When you're thinking about the future, don't do it to worry. Don't do it to think about what you've got coming up and what you need to do and where you need to be and what you should have done. Don't do that. When you think about the future, do it in small doses and only do it in preparation and planning to grow and develop. So when I'm thinking about the future, I'm doing it very purposefully now. I've got my planner out and I'm writing out my week. 
And when that's done, I put that away and I just leave it next to me all week long. So I don't have to think about what's coming up in my day. I can just look at my planner and see, okay, got that at two. Great. Now I don't stress about my future all the time because it's written down. I get it out of my head and onto paper and then I can let it go. So once you write down what you've got coming up, you can surrender it to the, to the present and you can start being present again. So get the future out of your head and onto paper. That has helped me so tremendously and only get into the future in the past for learning experiences. The future, you go there to plan and prepare and the past, you go there to learn a lesson. And those are the only reasons that those moments exist to you anymore. They don't exist to you to sit there and worry about, oh, I gotta do this and this, and what am I gonna do, and da 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 They don't exist to you to be like, I'm a freaking failure, look at how I handled that, I wish I said this, I wish I did this. That is pointless, and that is why you have anxious feelings. So only do it purposefully. Next thing you can do is let go of your performance, okay? Maybe you did do a bad job, but that doesn't mean that you have to ruin the next five days thinking about the bad job that you did. If you did a bad job, recognize, okay, I'm going to improve next time and then let it go. Surrender. Surrender is like my new favorite thing to do. I've been doing it for about two months now and it's changed my life. So when you're sitting there beating yourself up, thinking about that performance, surrender it. Just let it go. You understand that you didn't do a great job and you can do a better job the next time, but worrying about the bad job for the next five days is only going to do what? Ruin your next five days. So stop doing that to yourself. You don't have to punish yourself. You don't have to overanalyze everything that you do. All you have to do is be aware that it happened and change it the next time. It, it is that beautiful. So that one is cultivate unselfconsciousness. Let go and stop thinking about your performance. Next up, practice sabering. And I love this one so much. Avoid worrying about the future and the past by fully experiencing the present. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. But some ways that I do that is that I feel. So I, I feel the experience on the outside of my body. So if I'm sitting with Vega, I might feel his leg brushing up against my leg. But I also feel what it feels like on the inside of my body. So I feel the feelings that happen and I, I see them. I don't overanalyze them, but I see them and I, I, I share a little moment of gratitude for that feeling. I experience the emotions in my body. I don't run from them. I notice that emotion that I'm having and I sit in it and I feel it fully. So savor the moment. When you pick something up, really feel it in your hands. Um, when you're in the shower, really feel that water on your skin. You're, you're giving away how good it feels to just stand in the shower you're giving it away to anxious thoughts about what's about to happen in your future. Instead of worrying about that meeting that you're about to have, just think about the water on your skin. That to me is practicing savoring the moment and feeling every situation that happens to you. So that's a huge one. Um, next, you can focus on your breath. If you are lost in the future or you're lost in the past and you cannot get control of your mind, focus on your breath. So feel your breath going into your nostrils, into your lungs, and back out again. When you are fully focused on your breath, it is impossible to be focused on anything else. You cannot focus on worried thoughts of the past or the future because you are fully in the now. So focusing on your breath will immediately do it for you. The next one is find your flow. Make the most of your time by losing track of it, okay? So when you're really feeling everything and seeing everything and you're immersed in everything, it is easy to wake up one day and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, that day is gone because you were in the day. You weren't in your mind worrying about the day. You were actually in the day. So find that flow. Listen, life is smarter than us, so let life lead you. You don't have to control what happens next because life knows what you need to happen next. Every experience that you go through is perfect for you because it's the experience that you are having right now. And there's a lesson for you to learn. So let life lead you. Go with that flow. Don't be so controlling. If something happens and it, it catapults you into a new direction for your day, go with it. Find the flow. Next, improve your ability to accept. And I think this is absolutely one of the biggest concepts in this life. Improve your ability to accept. 
move toward what is bothering you rather than denying it or running away from it. So if something bad happens in my day, like let's say that, let, I'll give you a real example, the day that our car was stolen, okay? We could have made it a freaking disaster. We could have freaked out and, and thought about all the, the negatives that are happening and, and what are we going to do? And we could have worried and we could have gotten anxious and we could have fought with each other, but we didn't. We accepted that it happened. So we literally surrendered right then and there. Well, our car was stolen, but I'm not going to let it ruin this day or this moment. I'm just going to try to see what I can do about it and and we're just going to live. So that's why nothing bothers me in 10. That's why we can lose all of our money or our car or something disastrous can happen and, and it doesn't affect us because we accept. We practice acceptance. I accept everything that happens to me and I know that it's meant to hap happen to me because it did. You know, like my dad dying. A lot of people are unable to accept. And I'm not saying it was easy, it's hard every single day, but I've accepted the fact that he died and that he's not here with me. And yes, I hate it, but that doesn't mean that I can't experience and fully live every single day of my life to the best of my ability because he's gone, because I still do. I accept that he's gone and I accept that I'm going to make the most out of my badass life as possible, even though he's not here. That's acceptance, and you can practice acceptance with anything, and you can let go of that past and accept the right now, anytime. So improving your ability to accept is a huge, huge life transformer, and I absolutely love it. The acceptance, the surrender, it's so beautiful. And then last but not least, enhance your engagement. So work on reducing moments of mindlessness and noticing new things to improve your mindfulness. So when you're at that party, instead of thinking about what you've got to do next, be at that party, okay? Hear the words that are coming out of people's mouths. Feel the words as they go into your ears and inside your body. What emotions do those words stir in you? You know, what are you feeling from this conversation? Be mindful, be in the moment, enhance your engagement. Because when you're worried about the meeting, you're not even at the party. Like maybe you have a selfie that you can post on Facebook, but you sure as hell got nothing from those relationships, those conversations, or those moments because you weren't there. And that is on you. You have the power to be here, so be here. And I promise all of this is going to change your life and it's going to stop the panic in your life. So now that we've went through living in the now because it's my jam, I wanna give you two more things that have tremendously worked for me and for many other people um, throughout my journey with panic. So after Vega, I had, after I had Vega, I had serious PTSD and um, I would have these, these attacks, these debilitating attacks. I would lose my vision and the ability to move my limbs. And I was constantly in and out of the hospital. I thought I was dying. They kept telling me, you're having attacks. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm really dying. They're like, no, you're really not. And after going in and out of the hospital and trying all these different medications, I finally found something that worked for me by doing research. And what I found was that panic um, clinics when you go there and you're experiencing an attack, they will put a little teaspoon of baking soda into some water and they'll give it to you and it, it stops your attacks immediately. And so that's what I did for about a year of my life. When I was having an attack, I would drink my baking soda and it saved my life in those moments. So if you are in a quick bind and you feel it coming on, you feel it creeping up your arms and into your body, go grab some baking soda out of your kitchen. Everybody's got some and take some. You will feel better instantly. And then of course my last one is CBD. You guys know I'm CBD queen. I'm obsessed with CBD. We use it in absolutely every situation of our life for every member of our family. And um, I can't explain to you how many people I have helped put their panic into the past by using this miraculous oil. So I hope you guys love this. I hope you got something from my Stop Your Panic Live. I hope that you can apply these things in your life. And if you love this, please give it a share. Uh, write me something nice. I love you guys. And here are some things that I do. If you're interested in either of these, shoot me a message. I am the owner of a CBD business, and I help 
everyday people start one too. It's a phone-based business. So if you guys want in on this, shoot me a message. And then I also have a group for growth. So if you are interested in continuing to grow, if you're interested in being a go-getter in this life and you want to join our growth group, shoot me a message and I will hook you up. So thanks for hopping on here with me, guys. I absolutely love you. I appreciate you every single day. And I hope you have the best day today. And I hope that you can fully live your life today in the present moment. Have a good day, guys.